let me give you some new blood that's hoping to get in, but they're going in the wrong direction. And that, of course, is our beloved New York Jets. They foobarred the end of their game against Detroit. Oh, now uh, Robert Sal on the sideline, not knowing when to call timeouts. And uh, he came out yesterday, and among other things, before I get to his quote, he said he didn't sleep at all last night. He said he kept going over the timeouts over and over again. Now, here's the question before I play the audio for you. Did Robert Solis say, okay, fine, I messed up? Or did he have some kind of cockamamie, convoluted excuse for it? He was asked about the timeouts after the game when it's fresh. And his answer after the game was, well, listen, you have no problem with the clock when you got three timeouts, so the amount of time on the clock didn't matter. All right, then he came out yesterday and you didn't see it there, and he elaborated on why he didn't call the timeout on the Garrett Wilson catch, which was right near the first down marker. And his answer yesterday was, after not sleeping on it and thinking about it over and over again, that the reason he didn't call timeout was he didn't want them to review the play because he wasn't sure if it was really a first down or not. And the referees gave him a first down based on how they spotted it. But it's irrelevant if it's a first down or not. The clock is much more relevant. Mm -hmm. This is an example of a coach who's resting on his laurels a little bit and that he's got the Jets at seven wins, which a lot of people did not expect to be fair. Mm -hmm. But there are different types of seven and seven teams. They're going the wrong way. They've got a quarterback problem, Mm -hmm. and they have a coach on the sideline who I like a great deal, but who cost them the chance to tie or win the game. Mm -hmm. And that's unacceptable in your second year as a head coach. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, especially. Not sorry. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Um, yeah, especially when you look at the timeout situation. The, that's one of the big things that goes through head coaches all the time. It's like when to use the timeouts and when not to. Um, and he messed that up. And I think after the game, you know, the emotions are always high. So I, I don't usually put a lot of stock into it. Okay. Um, for post game uh, quotes and everything. But then coming out today, having talking about the um, overturn it and everything, it didn't really make a lot of sense. But he did own up to it. Um, he and, took and some ownership so of it for sure. He didn't. He didn't say, "Listen, my coordinator said I, we can get the playoff." Like he he took it on him. So yep. I, I don't hate it. He did. Uh, he did take one time at home. So if you're one of the solid kids, you know it's in one of those boxes under the Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh look! Hey, Daddy, you gave me an unused timeout. Oh, it's so nice. It's so nice. This is always crazy. This is always crazy to me, though, because I don't know if you guys had it in New York, but we had a guy in Green Bay that stood up there every Tuesday and said. Hey, we did a really good job with our timeouts. We had all three of them in the fourth quarter with a chance to use all three of them and all this. He goes through all the analytic stuff and all that, you know, letting Coach Mike, hey, this game, you use this timeout too soon and all that. And I've never understood why you got all these coaches on the sideline that make big-time money, and you got a guy like this that stands up there every Tuesday and gives you the whole spill. Huh? Why are you the only one that could call a timeout? Right. You know, I coach Little League football. The refs come up to me before the game, and I ain't making Robert Sala money, but they say, do we only talk to you? No, you can talk to all my coaches. Anybody can call a timeout. I can be doing this and all that. and not Like, I don't understand because it's happened all the time in the NFL yeah. where the coach got to run down there. No, why can't everybody, if you're coaching or whatever, and by the time way, out? As much as we just kind of made fun of Rasul Douglas for, you know, the flea flicker, you know, coaches have to be aware of other coaches being criticized nationally. Jeff Saturday went through this two weeks ago yeah. when he failed to use a timeout on a drive Thank that they might have won the game. Out. You can't tell me you're not a coach over there like, ooh, we should be using a timeout. And I'm time out. sure they wear headsets. They're talking yeah. to a bunch of dudes, right? Wow. How come nobody else is in Robert Sala's ear going, yo, timeout, timeout? Time out. And, that, and that's what I'm saying, man. That, that's the confusing stuff right there because, like I said, all them coaches over there is educated. I'm not saying you got to talk to all 22 coaches on the sideline, but at least if it's five or six over there, hey, any one of us could call a timeout over here. You now, know let me I mean? ask you this. The Jets do have a, a very young team, especially on, on offense, but uh, should a player have stepped up there and called timeout, or is that – you're know, overstepping the boundaries of being a player where it's really the coach's job to do it. I think it's coach's job. 
I got think it. as a player, you come out and you, you call the timeout. Coach is like, no, that's not what we're doing here. I like, <laughs> got you, it. You must be out of a job. But, but, I mean, I think it's a, the awareness of the situation, too, though. You know what I mean? Like, you've seen plenty of players run down there and call timeouts, you know, awareness of the situation. So, Typically, I mean. Typically, those, those are older quarterbacks. Yes. Veteran that, quarterbacks. That is very who are true. told by the coordinator, hey, if we get this first down, if we, you know, get call so many time yards, out. as soon as they get down, you call that, timeout. That is, you're right. Although we did see true. Matt Ryan didn't do it with the Colts earlier this year. There was a couple other examples that we've talked about. Uh, one last thing on the Jets, uh, because the Jets are 7-7, seven and seven, and they're fighting to try to get into the playoffs. They play Thursday night against the uh, Red Hot. Jacksonville Jaguars, mm -hmm. and uh, it looks like Zach Wilson is going to be the starting quarterback again. Mike White, according to a report last night, has multiple rib fractures Ooh. on both sides Ooh, yeah. of his body. Yeah, yeah. And while he did shop around to find a doctor, he even went to Guatemala, uh, not for <laughs> butt implants, but they were offered to him to get a guy to say, you can take a hit in the game, I'll bless it. No doctor would do that. It's highly unlikely he's going to play on Thursday which means another week of Zach Wilson as the Jets quarterback. And Robert Sahl spoke about how we're not willing to be patient with the development of his young quarterback. Here's the reality of Zach Wilson and the Jets in this game. <laughs> Zach Wilson did not play great football, period, stop, he didn't. That being said, Zach Wilson's not the reason they lost the game against Detroit either. Zach Wilson led them on a fourth quarter drive for a touchdown that gave them the lead. The Jet vaunted defense allowed Detroit to go right down the field and score a touchdown. Zach Wilson then led the Jets into field goal territory. We missed the field goal and the coach mismanaged the sideline. That being said, Zach Wilson is one of the worst pocket passers I've ever seen in my entire life. And he's a 23-year-old kid with a cannon for an arm. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it don't. And I'm, I'm laughing at that because I wish a coach would have had my back like that, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Not up there, you know what I mean? Knowing that I'm sorry and telling me that, telling the media that I'm good. No, I mean, I, I truly believe that Zach Wilson's not the guy. You I think you mean? and like, everybody that watches the Jets I feels mean, the same way. I mean, here, 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 he's not, he's not the guy. And when you watch him, like you say, like I, I look at the receivers and the body language and the throws and all that. And these receivers are so frustrated with him out yes. there throwing the football. They don't know where it's going. They don't know how it's coming. They don't know when it's coming. And you just ain't seen no growth from him. No. You know, and you, normally you by no year growth. two, and that and that's the scary and that's the scary part. Hey there! Thank you so much for watching the Carton Show. You can subscribe right here to get all the latest bits and segments from the show. And by the way, while you're at it, we have a lot of great shows on FS1. So check them out too.